Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Star Wars, the series where you can learn about what happened every week in space. I'm Jeb, I'm your host for today's episode, and we've got a seriously packed one this week. Starship testing, Falcon Heavy, China's launch and uncontrolled re-entry of Long March 5B, SLS rolling out to the pad for its fourth time, Capstone, and much, much more. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm sure we speak for everyone when we say that we love a busy day at Starbase. And boy oh boy, did Halloween bring us some drama. On Monday, we saw Cruz finally pull the plug on Booster 8 and guide it on its walk of shame back to the Rocket Garden. Later that morning, an exciting development shone through the clouds. Various Twitter sources, including Eric Berger and Christian Davenport, shared that we would be getting the first orbital flight of Starship in early December. This means that in November, we can expect a launch license to be granted, final testing, and the regulatory side of the flight to take shape. This will very likely include the first ever 33 engine static fire, and even a full stack wet dress rehearsal. NASA also stated that SpaceX has demonstrated their ability to produce one Raptor engine per day. As seen in this image shared by SpaceX, they have manufactured the 200th Raptor engine. What an insane pace of production. But it doesn't end there. NASA's Mark Kirisich also stated that the first test of Starship's in-orbit cryofluid transfer is expected to take place during Starship's second orbital flight. Orbital refueling is, of course, a critical component of Starship and HLS that will be needed in order to reach the moon and beyond. The same day, we saw venting from the orbital launch mount and orbital launch integration tower, setting the stage for Booster 7's cryogenic propellant load, which began at around 1532 local time. About 40 minutes later, Booster 7 was detanked. At first, it seemed to be just another standard cryoproof test. However, the ship's quick disconnect arm underwent a retraction test about an hour later. And about 20 minutes after that, the booster and the ship depressurized, indicating the end of testing for the day. Following the cryo test from the night before, at around 11.19 local time, we saw venting from the suborbital tank farm. About 30 minutes later, we were able to see a frost ring form on Ship 25's LOX tank as it began a cryoproof test, which lasted for around an hour and a half. Then we saw an incredible performance from Falcon Heavy that must have given Ship 25 stage fright, as its tanks were depressurized shortly after. This would normally indicate that testing is done for the day, however, we were treated to a double dose of nitrogen when the methane tank was filled up shortly after. Sadly, the tank was not filled that much and after about 40 minutes, Ship 25 depressurized again. Cars went back to the pad, and Starbase workers threw in the towel to round up yet another day at Boca Chica. The amazing team at Starbase definitely kept busy this week. The road closed again on Wednesday, and the suborbital tank farm came to life for another round of cryoproof testing of Ship 25. Although, this time, the frost in the LOX tank looked a lot more solid and held full frost for more than two hours until a frost ring appeared on the methane tank as well, which was loaded a little bit more than last time. About an hour later, Ship 25 depressed and the frost levels decreased, indicating the end of testing for the day. The road closed again on Thursday, and the orbital tank farm came to life, loading the methane tanks on both Booster 7 and Ship 24. Both vehicles were drained after roughly 30 minutes, but two and a half hours later, the LOX tank on Booster 7 grew its own frost line and kept it for around 40 minutes before detanking. It's not every day the community is treated to an official upload by SpaceX regarding Starship or Starbase. But on Friday, SpaceX uploaded an amazing new YouTube video titled Life at Starbase. It's a quick virtual tour of the site, including some incredible views of the various ships and boosters. They showed some footage from inside Mission Control and several other shots, including some workers underneath the skirt of one of the boosters, some workers assembling a Raptor engine, several aerial shots of the facility, the Ad Astra School, an on-site coffee shop, and a lot more. There's a ton of never-before-seen footage in here, and I for one am excited to see what new knowledge the community will find by dissecting this video. If you want to enjoy the video on your own, we will put a link to it in the description. On Monday morning, the Chinese National Space Agency launched a Long March 5B carrying the Mengtian Laboratory module bound for the Tiangong Space Station. 13 hours later, at around 2027 UTC, Mengtian was successfully docked with Tiangong. It has been fascinating to see this new space station take shape 
and it'll be interesting to see more of what it can do in future missions. Just one day later, SpaceX finally launched their Falcon Heavy again, the most powerful operational rocket in the world carrying its USS F-44 mission. This mission had been delayed for over two years, being originally scheduled for quarter four of 2020. But in the end, we did finally get to see another Falcon Heavy launch after three years of waiting. Unfortunately, the East Coast's crazy weather struck again, and several ground observers and cameras managed to capture more fog than rocket. However, as the rocket lifted off and flew above the cloud layer, we did get to see a couple of beautiful ground tracking shots of Falcon Heavy leaping towards the skies. On this mission, the core booster was expended, but the side boosters performed a return to launch site. Ground observers witnessed six spectacular sonic booms as the boosters went transonic on their way to land. Take a listen to this. Absolutely incredible. Due to the fact that the payload was classified, no shots of the second stage were shown after stage separation, and the stream ended after the awesome double booster landing, marking the 150th and the 151st successful booster landings by SpaceX. On Wednesday at 0648 UTC, Roscosmos launched a Soyuz 2.1B rocket for the 78th time from the Placet Cosmodrome launch site carrying a payload of the Tundra or EKS series of satellites, which are the next generation of early warning satellites set to replace the older USK and USKMO early warning satellites. On Thursday at 0522 UTC, SpaceX launched Booster 1067 on its seventh flight, carrying another Hotbird 13G satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. This launch marks the 51st Falcon 9 launch this year, and the 152nd successful booster landing overall. After stage separation, we had another beautiful landing on Just Read the Instructions, one of SpaceX's three autonomous spaceport drone ships. This mission comes after another Hotbird launch. SpaceX launched the other half of the mission, Hotbird 13F, about a month ago. Now that both satellites are in orbit, the pair of geostationary telecommunication satellites can begin working together. On Friday at 17.15 UTC, Rocket Lab launched an electron rocket for the 32nd time carrying the Swedish MATS, or MATS, satellite into a sun-synchronous orbit. MATS stands for Mesospheric Aeroglow Aerosol Tomography and Spectroscopy Satellite. Yeah, try saying that one three times fast. Rocket Lab attempted to catch the spent first stage mid-air using a helicopter, but the attempt was called off due to unstable telemetry from the first stage during re-entry. Despite this, the first stage still splashed down safely into the water to be recovered by a nearby recovery vessel and hopefully reused for a future mission. About an hour after the fantastic launch, Rocket Lab confirmed payload deployment, and our favorite hat eater Peter Beck shared an incredible video of the deployment on Twitter. And for the final launch of this week, on Monday, Northrop Grumman launched the NG-18 Cygnus resupply mission, nicknamed Sally Ride in honor of American astronaut Sally Kristen Ride, to the International Space Station on an Antares 230 Plus rocket. The launch was initially targeted for 10.50 UTC on Sunday, but at about 10.40 AM, a fire alarm sounded in the control room. The control room was evacuated, and the launch was scrubbed for the day. Fortunately, it was finally launched on November 7th at 10.37 UTC, with capture of the Cygnus spacecraft by ISS Canada Arm 2 scheduled for November 8th. Heading back over to China now, on Saturday, the creatively named ChinaSat-19 blasted off on a Long March 3B-E to a geostationary transfer orbit from the Zhichang Launch Center. This was a routine launch of a typical communication satellite, but it was a beautiful sight nonetheless. Speaking of Chinese rockets, the U.S. Space Command confirmed that debris from a Long March 5B rocket uncontrollably re-entered Earth's atmosphere over the South Central Pacific Ocean at around 11 p.m. on Friday. Spanish authorities temporarily closed the airspace over Barcelona due to concerns that the rocket debris would literally snipe planes out of the sky. Moving over to America now, the Capstone mission is on track to the moon, with NASA announcing a successful trajectory correction on October 27th. 
after saving Capstone on October 7th from an uncontrollable spin due to a thruster valve malfunction which spun the spacecraft beyond the capabilities of the onboard reaction wheels to stop it. Capstone is set to arrive in its operational near-rectilinear halo orbit on November 13th. This will help prove the theoretical stability of such an orbit for the Artemis program's planned Gateway Space Station. Moving a bit further away this time to Mars, more specifically the Elysium Planitia region. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory has revealed what is probably the last image by the InSight lander. Launched on May 5th, 2018, and landed on November 26, 2018, InSight will soon succumb to the Martian dust covering its solar panels. Although InSight may soon die, its discoveries will live on, such as its recent detection of a large Martian meteorite impact on October 27th. Let's go back to Earth now, or at least the Earth-Moon system. An updated Artemis mission manifest released by NASA on October 31st indicated a manned moon mission with HLS landing on the surface would take place as early as 2027, with further construction of the Gateway Space Station also planned for that year. Speaking of Artemis, we have news about SLS and Artemis 1. The big orange rocket rolled out of the VAB for the fourth time ahead of its launch window currently set for November 14th. SLS arrived at Pad 39B at around 8.30 a.m. EDT. Let's all hope its next stop is the moon this time. Anyway, that's all we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Star Wars. If you like what we do here and want to interact with us and other space enthusiasts, stay up to date with real-time space updates, and more, consider joining our Discord server. The link is on screen and in the description. Have a great week. We'll see you in the next one.